And this enables people to really uh, um, make booking on site. They want instant confirmations. And all these little details are the ways how people um, having uh, their behavior have been reshaped um, through the help of internet connections and for the help of uh, the penetration rate of mobile devices um, in the major markets, especially in Taiwan. So we're looking at a bunch of people uh, who right now, by using a phone, he could have all the researches and all the planning done. And most importantly, they could have all the purchases done. And that's when they, uh, which also the mobile internet uh, penetration will really help them kind of grow that uh, in a way that they wanted to do. Let's say I want to do last minute bookings. They want to look for more local or more diff like different experiences than others. So of course, when it comes to mobile, Oh, internet, social media is a huge part of traveling as well. So you wanted to not only plan your uh, trip instantly, plan your trip on site, you want to share. You want uh, to share what you have planned with your friends instantly as well through Instagram, through I, uh, Facebook, for all these different social uh, networks that has been, um, been buzzing in uh, Taiwan. So natural people want to look for more, let's say more, uh, they want to be more unique, right? So people want to share and say, hey, I've, I've got this, I've got this uh, experiences plan out that nobody else has done. And, it, and also we have like beautiful pictures. We've gone to the villages, we've gone to a very in-depth travel. And this is, um, this also developed along the way of 2015 to 2020. In this, in this short five years, this, we see this trend grow even more where people are looking for how do I travel in a very different way than, than, than my friends or, and I love to share with it. And this is another great example of what really drives our uh, business, um, what really drives our growth in the past five years. And this is not, and again, this is not only limited to, um, you know, Taiwanese traveling in Taiwan. It actually, it's more actually a, a bigger uh, driving force is actually coming from Taiwanese going outbound. Taiwanese going to Japan, they want to go for those uh, Japanese uh, cultural experiences like nobody else for uh, eat like local, travel like local, and you know, of course, people go to Korea, they will try out uh, the hanbok, they will go for, uh, they will learn how to make kimchi. These are the things that we have seen as already not only, it's not just a trend, it's becoming a very essential part where, where people um, tend to uh, book their uh, travel, how to plan their, uh, their their itinerary. This has become a very essential part of that business. Well, then of course, those are the good old days, right? So that those are the good old days that really uh, help us shape and help us grow from 2015 to 2020. And of course, um, well, 2020, we all know, you know, when the pandemic breaks out, and when everything became, you know, everything got shut down globally, you know, everybody is, is grounded. This, of course, had a great impact on the traveling industry uh, in Taiwan. So, um, and I believe this could be related, this could be applied to all the different countries. And, of course, in Korea, I believe that's the same case as well. So, traveling industry are very much um, the first wave of victim of the outbreak of, uh, of the pandemic where people start a uh, country start to lock down borders starting roughly around march uh, all the way till now so it's been you know uh, it, uh, sorry it's been around eight nine months of total lockdown and you can see we are looking at major players big player line travels and other travel agencies big names out there have been suffering a wide uh, year over year drop of their revenue of their profit to roughly around 70 to 90%. Those are the golden ages and those are the transformation that we've been through uh, in the industry of travel here in Taiwan between 2015 and 2020. Um, well, then what happened in 2020 was obviously a, 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 you know, uh, something that has become a part of our life. The outbreak of the pandemic definitely is a devastating uh, uh, blow to the traveling industry in Taiwan as well as I believe in all around the world. So what we have seen from the uh, starting of the outbreak where uh, we, I think we immediately apply a very strict lockdown, uh, border lockdown policy all the way from March was that um, a lot of the big payers, uh, most of the players and especially the big names, the uh, Lion Travels, um, Cola Travel, these big names has been reported that they suffered uh, from a um, 70 to 90 percent loss of their revenue, which means that right now they're uh, they're forced to deal with 
the a, a term sheet with only 10% of the revenue left from last year. So that is definitely a, a, a shocking blow. And I, I, we have seen, we will share more details about how people deal with it. But um, on, a, on a bigger scale, um, on a bigger scale, we're definitely, it's, it's a devastating time. It's a very desperate time for travel players um, in Taiwan. On the other hand, we managed uh, as a comp uh, as a country, uh, we have managed to uh, contain the pandemic uh, outbreak in Taiwan quite efficiently, quite effectively. So right now, we're seeing a very scattered um, um, uh, spread of the pandemic here in Taiwan. So that has been one of the good news in among the, all the bad news out there. Um, but this also caters to a very interesting uh, twitch twist in how the travel industry had break out, which is really something about domestic travel being the leading player and the leading topic of the current time. So right now, as we said, it's a very, um, um, the, the rate of infection has been very low, but we only have, we, we have not yet seen a, uh, uh, what we say, internal infection happening. Um, um, it, it's mostly inbound from people who flew in the country and got, uh, got, uh, COVID positive uh, um, result. Um, so as a result of that, people know, uh, in general, uh, people here feel safe of gathering uh, in, in a massive crowd. There are still events being held, as you see, and uh, we're, we're looking at, we're probably the, one of the only country uh, in the region or in the world are still able to host huge rallies. We're talking about uh, concert of 10 to 12,000 people, baseball game of nearly uh, 8,000 people, uh, parade still goes on on the street, political uh, gathering are still allowed and uh, very much uh, uh, very much alive. So those are the things that are really unique in Taiwan. And this is a great part where you can see there are still a lot of things that the uh, some of the players could do. Um, and, uh, and the people definitely who, uh, who lives and work here are able to enjoy a rather uh, let's say rather normal life as it was, we can trip out still allowed. So we see a, a, a huge growth in some of the island trips uh, that happened over the summer, and uh, especially Penghu, we are seeing a huge, actually a, a much better result coming compared to last year. And uh, so those are the things that we definitely are uh, still very we feel very blessed about. And as uh, players in the industry, those are the things that we really pivoted our teams, pivoted our organization, our strategy to cater to this change. On the right hand side, you can see, well, as you know, within the island, everything seems very, you know, nice and calm. People are still very active and going on the events. People feel safe going around in the island. Well, the international travelers remain a, a devastated uh, numbers since we're still on lockdown. You can see a huge number of differences, but I believe this chart could apply in majority of all the every countries out there. Um, and it, more or less, there we're looking at a basically zero um, percentage of travelers. You might have still have business travelers coming around, but pure travelers, FITs, group, whatever, they don't they don't exist on the chart anymore. And I think that is something. Um, as a as the whole, um, not just like this whole nation, everyone in, in the world are going through the same thing. But we're lucky that domestically that's still an option for us. So what happened? Uh, we want to share a little bit about what happened when there's only uh, domestic market. So we're looking at well, Taiwan as the size of this island. We're not exactly a huge island. We do have a very um, we have a good variety of um, landscape and mountains ocean activity. So um, we're looking at the limitation of market size for sure. And we're also looking at, for for, um, for example, there are huge, um, let's say, well, some of the leading travel agencies that have, they used to have about 2,000 staffs was working, um, and 90% of that staff are working on outbound. Well, there are zero outbound now. So that's definitely an oversupply of human resources having an issue, and we have a lot of we also see we have a lot of people who flew in, uh, who fled their, uh, they used to work, let's say they used to work in America, they used to work in China, and because of the COVID-19 scenario, they ran, uh, they, they fled back home, 
And that's also con 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 um, uh, contributing to the oversupply of human resources, both in the travel agency and also in the job market. That's also making things, you know, they're not helping things to get better as well. And as well, in the, because of the, the, the behavior changes uh, since everybody's in the domestic market, the, 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 the key resources that we used to define has also been changing. So in the past, uh, we're looking at some of the hotels in the re, uh, re, uh, uh, suburban area, hotels in the resort or hotel in the, uh, let's say, the islands of Taiwan. Not necessarily were the key resources or the supply and demand wasn't in that uh, that much of a big of a difference, and right now, because of the domestic surge, they all have became the key, like the, the rare resources that everybody wanted to secure. So those are the three big changes we see, and we predict that it will be a similar um, um, uh, issue for domestic only scenario. And uh, to follow with that, um, to 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 come come up with the the, the uh, surge of domestic travel in Taiwan. One of the big topic is islands. So we don't have that many islands. We do have a couple of islands along the coastal area, uh, probably about 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes flight from uh, the major cities. How to get there is still a big issue for us. So transportation became, uh, that's bridging these islands with Taiwan has become a very big issue. And those, uh, also coming back to one of the points that we mentioned about redefining key resources. So whether it's train that take us to the rural area, or it's plane, or the, 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 the boat ride, the ferry ride, and also to turn out to, um, the uh, accommodations in these islands are the hot, like one of the, the hard, uh, hardest to get resources here in Taiwan. And that's where everybody has been chasing after, everybody has been trying to secure it. And uh, this is something that we never, uh, we have never seen before because in the past people could choose to just, you know, instead of flying to the island, Taiwan, we, I could just fly to Okinawa, I could just fly to Jeju Island. Those are still, when those are still options, the islands in Taiwan are less considered in, let's say, 2019 and the years before. And, well, we're talking about securing key resources. resources uh, but what if you're, you know, you didn't, is secure enough key resources or the key resources you secure are not just not enough to fill the blank of your revenue which is very likely this case we see a lot of um, let's say creativity coming out from different groups of uh, from the light uh, the picture on the left uh, we see phoenix tours one of the also one of the big players here in taiwan doing unique group tours they started a gym um somehow connecting their brands with the gym project uh, but uh, it's a, a, a side project and and now it became the main project of this uh, one street known travel agency and of course SDT tours uh, who uh, has some records in selling uh, souvenirs are now doing um, they sell fruits they sell vegetables they sell olive oil, oil they sell goods they became a, a EC platform they became a, a uh, online grocery um, vendor of that sort and of course you have line travel the leading the leading player uh, of Taiwan doing takeout restaurant doing um, express restaurant they were doing in food core or they're opening a new restaurant basically moving to the FNB side of the business so those are um, let's say creative ways but they are not exactly connected to traveling itself so for the I mean for traveling itself um, because of the over uh, supply, the over sorry, the over demand of the resources, we are also seeing problems or troubles facing the end suppliers, which is the operators, the tour guides, the uh, car rentals, and these are the things that we see it has been causing troubles to normal people who are not in the industry. So, for instance, um, Pomo Island is a place where used to have probably a couple thousand, a couple ten, ten, twenty thousand 10, 20,000 people a day has been, you know, one of the peak. But right now we're looking at 200%, 300% people coming in. So the street of a once peaceful and uh, a very uh, peaceful and very quiet island and not much people going around are now filled just like a, like a, like a downtown area of Taipei City or huge shopping centers. And these are causing problems to local um, to locals who live there and also we're looking at a lot of people uh, re reporting to say they don't have enough water, they don't have enough um, 
the raw materials, they don't have enough food to carry all these tourists, they even have to import water, they have to import uh, food and materials. And, and the, one of the most interesting news that we've seen is in Penghu, they're known for their seafood, right? It's an, it's an island, it has a lot of fishermen that provide very fresh and high quality seafood. But in the end, because of the over demand of the, the, the crazy amount of uh, travelers going in there, they have to import seafood from Taiwan and so that they can cook it there to, to provide it to the tourists. And that's something that we definitely see. I mean, as humorous as the, the news might sound, it is a big issue that basically showing us providing supplies and the d- difficulties of providing supplies or building new supplies and the huge differences between the demand and supply surge when your domestic um, market breaks out. Um, and also because of people, uh, the, the, uh, everybody wanted to get a piece of this uh, domestic uh, market, uh, here, a domestic travel market here in Taiwan. We're, we're also looking at a lot of players in, uh, in the main island of Taiwan are coming up with new, uh, new attractions. Uh, they wanted to have new attractions to attract more, uh, more guests. But in the end, they, 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 they end up providing a very similar thing. We're looking at old street to traditional street market, night markets are very much the same. And uh, we have built a lot of these painting villages. And at the beginning, painting villages are done because there are some historical reasons behind it. But right now, people are just, uh, just creating, they try to create these uh, spots for people to take their Instagram photos. So we're seeing these very similar um, attractions uh, being made uh, all around the country, just because they wanted to get a, uh, they want to get attention, they want to get guests, they want to get more revenue income out of that. And these are these are not only coming from um, uh, local players, local um, companies, or local uh, operators. Some of them are run by government. So local government also, I believe, um, is the same case anywhere in the world. Bears a very heavy burden. The pressure to bring more guests to their local um, uh, county, to their local cities. So some of them are even driven by government to build these replication uh, attractions, the same attraction we see everywhere. So there are like a lot of them in Taiwan, and they look very much similar. And this is something we really ha- hate to see uh, because it really uh, it, it didn't the the deficit between supply and demand didn't create more um, competitiveness coming from these attractions or coming from more innovations or more uh, creativity. It became a war of how can you build more things the same and who spent more marketing money and that's something we hate to see um, definitely as, a, as, a, as an agency. Um, so it, 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 uh, all these above, it didn't inspire us to think, okay, for the past decades, what have we, what, what is the value we provided as OTAs or as TAs or any kind of companies in the travel industry? What have we been providing to the guests? What the value of our very existence? So one of the big, big things, of course, we use to bridge the gap of information because when you do outbound, there's a lot of, uh, you, you might get lost in um, translation, you might get lost because of transaction and all that. So bridging the gap of information has been a big, big part of our business. So easing, um, and also our um, our technology enables us to do uh, to ease the click and the ordering process of um, of our customer. So what we wanted to do is that uh, what we what we have been doing is provide a system for them to book, for them to do all that. And right now. Uh, it's easy for them to connect with the suppliers, to connect, uh, to pay to their local supplier because they are in the same country, they stay able to speak the same languages. And uh, those are things that no longer are that, that much of a, it's almost the same as the gap information of the gap of transaction, no longer needs to be bridged um, that much. So, and also the outside experiences create uh, visit values, navigate, and those are the things that are, well, I think OTA, could we still be able to uh, achieve um, uh, on top of comparing to the, the other uh, part where we only gap the differences, we became a bridge. Now we have to became a, a, a reason and provide the actual supply of, of providing actual on-site experiences to create value. So these are the things that we kind of, uh, kind of 
calm ourselves down, to think about what we can do and what is the best for us. And uh, some of the cases, of course, we want to share some of the agency do, did uh, approach their business with that uh, conclusion of creating new products, creating new experiences, actual experiences, offline experiences for their guests and has been gaining some really good um, attractions, has been gaining some uh, really good revenue as well. So um, for a lot of, uh, we've seen uh, agency who did, uh, who, who uh, uh, hire a boat, hire a cruise ship, because now cruise ship all park in the dock, uh, dock in the harbor, sorry. Um, and then they hired it in to do domestic cruise tour. So they stop city from city because we are at islands. So it's very easy to dump to go around the islands. So basically, um, using the same cruise ship, cruise tour model in the past, where you hop from city, uh, countries to country. Right now, we're just hopping city to city. But at the same time, it, 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 it was popular. People have to fight for a seat back then at the beginning. Uh, but uh, um, right now, it's really looking at how they design the tour, where do they stop, and what is provided on the cruise ship, which is, you know, that's one of the reasons why people go for cruise tour in the beginning is the entertainment, the, uh, the, the activities they can do on the cruise ship. Um, and that is something that had, we have seen has been creating a really good uh, traction. And another thing is stay in flights or stay flights or um, a lot of say uh, semi um, traveling experiences for the flight. And these are a big, big um, highlight of the early stage when uh, domestic travel became a big thing. So um, airlines, of course, just the same as the same logic of the cruise ship company, they they were suffering even more by plane by just parking their planes and, and at the airport. So they wanted to make use of some of the planes on top of those very scattered international flights. Right now, you know, are still operating. So we have been seeing all the major players, Starlog, um, Eva, and China Airline. They're all been doing these kind of uh, um, staying tour, uh, staying flights, where people just pay. Um, Probably something or something something around the same price what they would normally pay for air tickets to fly, let's say from Taiwan to um, Korea, Taiwan to Japan. Um, they're paying something around 200 USD roughly to just fly out from Taipei and then circle around the island. And there, there, there are different themes. There are the fly to the moon by Starlux where you um, in, in the mid autumn festival you can see the full moon from the sky. Or there are different uh, different themes of people flying to see the sunrise, people flying to see New Year's Eve, people flying to see, uh, or uh, people can see watch movies on the flight. The director comes on the flight and explain. So they want to play all the different contents, but essentially you're doing a flight that flies in and out at the same destination. So um, it has been growing up a lot of um, attractions, but we are also picking up different trends. Uh, sorry, different signal of sometimes. Uh, um, the, the the peak, of course, is when it was introduced at the beginning. But now it's becoming a little bit like they, they need to be they need to try even harder to put in more content so that people will buy. So experiencing the flight itself is not uh, necessarily the biggest selling point. Comparing to when is when everything started um, at the beginning of the the, the, the these kind of slight state flight trends. People just literally just fly out and then they fly back in. Not much happening. They, they had a lunch on the, on the plane and they can buy duty free, but that's it. Um, so this is, I think, this is an interesting case we can share. And I think this, all right, uh, and we see this in Taiwan and then in Hong Kong, they're doing it as well. And I think we've heard news about Korean uh, flights, uh, airline doing it as well. And this is a good model you can definitely uh, replicate. And then similar, um, cru uh, just like the cruise, the flight, trains in Taiwan has also been taking an approach trying to get a, a glimpse of uh, a, a, a part of the business from this uh, domestic surge. So cruise line trains are being redesigned, these classic products, and re uh, they, they remodel the interior of uh, cer uh, certain uh, trains. And then now they're doing the, gov gov uh, the government's resources combining with the OTA cells and the marketing ability to really transform the, uh, this used to be a just a transportation device and now it could really do a lot more. It became a hotel, became a, a playroom, became a lot more. 
And then, well, talking, we're all talking about these players who have heavy uh, capital um, uh, resources that are not being utilized at the moment. One of the, uh, uh, one of the big cases, of course, is hotels. So hotels in especially urban areas who used to be uh, very dependent on the inbound travelers, international travelers um, in the city uh, especially, are now doing utilizing their um, resources to do innovative uh, campaign like uh, you could have uh, VR games, you could have shows in the hotel rooms, you could some of them transfer into karaoke, uh, or it's a box, right? It's a room. And staycation is a big thing as well, coming back and forth. Um, so these are things that, because uh, these players are also very devastated. They uh, Every day that goes by, those room that are being sold. So um, that's, we're seeing a good trend of both people um, using innovation to transport their resources as well. And of course, there are the hipster and the hype attractions coming in. But uh, going back to the early stage, what we have explained 2019, uh, 2015 to 2019, we're looking at people who are very driven by social media, or let's say social media friendly traveling, which is you, know, you posting, you want to share people, share to people, say, hey, I travel very differently. I try, I travel to very in, with depth, like very deep travel. So. We're looking at the same trend as well when it comes to domestic. A lot of um, agencies are coming up with tours that takes you to a farmer's house, stay a night at a farmer's place, go into the farms, those kind of attractions. People go into mountains, people want to, uh, um, they want to experience Aboriginal culture. We do have a lot of uh, local tribes here. Um, so those are things that go into the hipster or more of uh, in-depth attractions. But at the same time, you have very high attraction, let's say, uh, it's very uh, hype being, um, we, we define it as a, it became a, a, a super popular, a very hot word uh, on the internet and where everybody just flooded in. And one of the, the examples is the, um, the Guishan Island near Taipei, uh, near Yilan, um, suburban Taipei. And where people just go in there and take uh, crazy pictures of what we call the, the, milk, uh, the milk pond. Uh, next, next to the island, people go out there and do SUP, stand up paddle, they do on, on water activities. And the best time, and at its peak, you will see like a dozen of boats gathering around that place. It would take turns to take good pictures. Well, those are the hype attractions that we picked up one every now and then uh, over the internet around the island. So, and again, in the past, you probably won't see even one boat there um, and be, before the whole COVID-19 uh, situation. And of course, mountain is a big part. I say seventy uh, plus percent of our land uh, of our uh, space are actually mountain. So a lot more people. We actually, you know, happen to set year out of coincidence um, of twenty twenty to be the year of mountain trout tourism here in Taiwan. So um, um, considerably, we're looking at a lot more people start going up to Taiwan. Um, both because the government encouraged them and also because there's no basically no place to go. Well, if you're locked here in this island and the 70% of your uh, your land is considered island, oh, sorry, considered mountain, people go into the mountain and that's something that we can, uh, it's definitely being expected. So um, we have a lot more people going to the mountain who don't use to, are not that familiar with what you need to prepare and what you need to uh, uh, to kind of equip yourself with. So we're seeing a lot more accident that happens. Um, it's spike, especially in the first half of, um, of um, to, 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 uh, 2020, uh, almost 20, 200%. A lot more accident happened, a lot more victim who uh, uh, lost their lives uh, in, their, in their trips in the mountain has been something that really caught our attention in the media and also on the government side. So the infrastructure wise, that's something that needs to also be brought in by the government, by the local agencies um, to help secure a safe uh, environment for the travelers and also to educate them how to keep themselves safe, how to uh, make sure they not only enjoy um, their trip, but also stay alive. And uh, we do have some idea sharing. So we've been talking a lot about the, um, the things, what, what we picked up um, from other agencies, from our government here in Taiwan, from other organizations here in Taiwan. We want to share a little bit what we have done um, in, uh, by, in like in KKD. And this is 
not only in Taiwan actually. One example, first example we want to share is uh, well, it's a more Taiwan slash Japan experiences we have. So we we do have offices all around um, all around uh, the region, and of course in Seoul, um, the office that we're working with, and of course, of course, in Japan, in Tokyo, we have an office there. So this is a story we want to share in Tokyo, where we have organized a tour, which is a to, uh, a Taiwan day tour in Tokyo. So we bring a lot of elements of Taiwan in Tokyo because there are, uh, there are Taiwanese temples, there are Taiwanese um, restaurants, there are Taiwanese vendors uh, in um, Tokyo who's, who, who's basically either uh, Taiwanese who move over there and started the business there. So we connect all these elements together and we organize a day tour by ourselves. And basically um, the idea was that even though you cannot travel to Taiwan now, you can still imagine yourself or ex get that experience of Taiwan, even though you're still in Tokyo. So this is a huge hit. We uh, we serve a lot, uh, a couple hundreds, um, a couple hundred customers joining the tours, trying out food, going to temples, and we even got a lot of attention from the media. Uh, as you can see from the, uh, the right hand side, they, uh, we are there are people who. Uh, basically came on the tour and, and interviewed us and gave us a lot of uh, coverage there. And this was the result, actually, of us working with the Taiwan Tourism Board in Tokyo. So this is the official collaboration, but it was organized by us. Everything from online experiences to offline experiences organized by us, but endorsed and um, sponsored by the Taiwan Tourism Board in Tokyo. And lastly, um, we want to share to utilize to see whether this is something we can definitely apply in, in Korea. And I, I know the, um, the the pandemic has been gone, you know, on the rise, sometimes it goes up and down for a while. So we still expect this will be uh, the case um, for, uh, for the majority of 2021. And so we are really expecting to see whether, whether we can, how can we work together and maybe do, let's say we can do Korean tours in Taiwan, or we can do Taiwan tours in Korea. These are all the dimensions that we can really link up together. And but the ultimate point is that we want we need to be the one who work with partners to provide actual experiences and create actual um, um, highlights to attract the customers. So these are the things that I we definitely um, our main takeaway of 2020 is how do we provide things that are different but it's attractive to the guests. And if you come to think of it, this has always been the idea. It's just now, um, because of the COVID crisis, we really have to think outside of the box and we have to touch people's heart by really going back say you, if you miss, if you miss traveling um, to other countries so much, how can we bring it here? So I think this is, well, this is basically some of what I wanted, to, what we wanted to share. And uh, we really look forward to have a, um, a more extensive discussion and collaboration in 2021 to see how can we best collect our resources and provide good experience to our customer. All right, that's it. Thank you.